Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, it's another hat film because it's just too damn hot to take my hair down, basically. But what you will also have seen from the thumbnail, uh, the title, and if you have read it, uh, the description, is that this is the uh, premiere outing of the AAA girls. That is. Angie, Angie, and Anya. You got yourself an Angie sandwich going on here. Now, aren't you lucky? So, the challenge we've set ourselves for our first film. is to use the Juvia's Place Tribe palette plus something else either a loose pigment a glitter or a liquid eyeshadow as a wild card joker in the pack a little some some to go with the palette. So, if you want to find out exactly what it is that I used and exactly what it is the other two girls have used, then you're just going to have to watch all three films. So, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I'm filming at night because it's too hot to film during the day. Makeup just falls off my face. Uh, but it's still ridiculously hot, so I have got the fan on. I will try to remember to speak a tad louder than I usually do. And I'll try and tweak it in post edit so you can actually hear me. Um, face is washed, moisturised primed, I didn't bother with the SPF because I'm not actually leaving the house. It's night time. And I've got a uh, Crow and Pebble white base on my eyelids and because I have to mix two pomades together to get green I have got my green eyebrows on. <laughs> right, uh, I will have told you this in the intro. This is a collab with the Triple A Girls. Angelica Lirmo, I think. I'm terrible with surnames. And Anya Stamper, that's an easier surname. And me, of course, Angie. So technically, technically I need to go this way. Let's move Anya over here. So that Anya is in an Angie sandwich. Lucky girl. Um, now, Angelica or Angie is one of the Swedish YouTubers that I followed for a long time. And I was chatting with Anya and she was saying she wanted some new people to watch. And I'm like, you have you tried this? Have you have you seen? The other Angelica, because of course you say Angelica, everyone thinks Angelica Newquist. I'm like, no, 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 there's another Angelica and she's just as good, let's get quietly, if not better, than Angelica Newquist. So, um, Anya started watching her and was like, oh my goodness, you're so right. And she commented on one of her pictures on Instagram saying that um, I had sent her Angie, oh, I've got a wiggle, hang on, I'll probably cut this out. Pain, gotta love it. 
Um, yeah, she commented, only commented on one of Angie's pictures on Instagram saying that I'd sent her her way. And um, she thought we should do a collab together. And Angie was like, yeah, absolutely. So that was it. We are now the triple A. We're the triple A girls. Um, and we decided with this collab, we've all got this particular palette. So Anya said, how about we all choose whatever colours we want from this palette, but then you have to add either one loose glitter, one loose pigment, or one individual pressed pigment or glitter. So that's your wild card. So I've actually gone for, this is an Oh My Glitter uh, pigment in gold. And it's one of the, it's the loose pigment that I got. Um, I got it in there, I think it was their April Mystery Box. Came with the yellow and green um, Get Sprung palette. And... This purple gel eyeliner. But at the moment, fibro, eyes running, hay fever, eyes running, eyeliner not happening. Right, um, now I am a teaching channel. I'm probably still going to slip into teaching a little bit, but I'm going to try and talk more about the collab in this one. But if I am going too slowly for you because of my chronic pain or because I've slipped into teaching mode, just use the speed budget and speed me up. I really won't mind. I mean, let's be honest, I'm not even going to know, am I? Right, let's get you zoomed in. Uh, I will just talk you through, as I always do, the difference between hooded eyes... I've got a little bit too close. The difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes, which is what I've got. Now, with my brows relaxed, when I'm looking straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner. So I've not got hooded lids. It's only if your static upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have hooded lids. So if that completely covers down to the lash line, you have either a full or a part hooded lid, or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes. I've heard them being called double lidded eyes recently. Um, and we suffer very similar issues that hooded eyed chaps and chapesses have in that get transfer of shimmer onto the upper lid if I'm cutting my crease I can't just cut the socket I have to go up onto the upper lid and even when I use glitter glues I end up with a bare patch of glitter usually right through the crease there I'm going to show you why if I cover the visible bit of my mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much lid space again that folds back away and if I cover my static lid and close my eye, you can see I've got lid space there as well, which tucks back away. So that's why I have the same issues. Now, if you have got a hooded lid, you can still follow my tutorial, you can follow anybody's tutorial. All you need to do is move your crease up. So you're creating a mobile lid on your static lid. So get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and just sketch out where you want your new crease line to fall. Now obviously that will reduce the space between your crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller brushes than I do and you'll be absolutely fine. Right, time to play with some colour. I've not used this palette yet so I'm super excited. I'd waited for ages for it to come to Beauty Bay and I finally spotted it on a website, I think it was Live Love London or something like that. And they actually had it on special offer for 18 quid. So I ordered it at like 10 o'clock at night and literally the next morning, 9 o'clock the next morning, so 11 hours later, it appeared on Beauty Bay for 30 quid. So I'm like, ah, oh, okay then. So I have got listed in my description box, I've got um, which brushes I recommend, and these are. This is one of the brushes. This is Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro Crease Brush. I love these. When I'm when my fibro is really bad and I can barely 
even touch my skin. These are the only brushes I can use that are soft enough that I can still blend. Um, and they're only like two quid each, so superb. Right, I've not set this base, but it's not a sticky base to touch. And you can see it hasn't actually creased, which is pretty damn amazing, really. Now I've just got a little, um, a little sample size pot of it, uh, which I bought from them. If I remember, I'll link my film in the description box. Um, I, they let me buy some pigments off of them pre-launch uh, pre so that I could get a film up using them. Um, and obviously I wanted to use their eyeshadow base to show the pigments off as, as, as well as possible. But I've used this base now with a lot of different palettes and other pigments, pressed and loose. And I've got to be honest, I think that outperforms my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot and it's cheaper and it's UK and it's indie and it doesn't crease and it's not yellow toned so you don't you get proper true colour enough wittering time to stick some colour on but I'm going to go into Maasai first which is this gorgeous sort of acid green it's almost like a yellow it's, it's just oh look at that and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pat this onto the lid rather than initially going straight in and blending because I want to build the pigment up so that we get as strong a colour as possible. Right, so the two girls. Now Anya I've collabed with on a number of, of different things. We started off with um, my photo collab series and then she, Nona and I became the bitches of Eastwick because we all uh, had a rather unpleasant un encounter with a larger YouTuber who shall remain nameless. Um, and we've also been in a big collab together, well, there were 14 of us in total, where we did for July the 4th for American Independence Day, we did musician inspired makeup looks. That was fun. I just got to slather a crap ton of colour all over my face, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, absolutely love Anya, she's, she's one of my, I class her one of my closest friends. Um, regardless of the fact we've never actually met, she is absolutely one of my closest friends. You know, we, we chat every day, um, and that's great. You know, it's it's one of the best things that's come out of, of me starting this YouTube channel is all the friends that I've made. Um, because obviously, with chronic illness that I have, and Anya has a lot of issues herself too. Um, it can be very, very difficult sometimes just socialising. I mean, my best mate Sophie's birthday, for example, her 30th. I had been looking forward to going out and celebrating that with her for months, because obviously she's been planning the party and everything, and it's a karaoke, and you know, I'm half Welsh. You know, getting me to start singing is not a problem, getting me to shut up at the end of the night and go home is the problem. And I've been looking forward to it for so long and then my pain levels have been so high the last sort of two days because I managed to pull a muscle in the base of my spine as well so I've got all that to cope with and with everything else that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. And the stress of that and the additional pain and the heat has basically made my IBS go crackers. And I've actually had to miss her birthday party and I'm absolutely gutted. I mean, I know she understands because she has chronic issues herself. But that's not the point. It's one of my best mates' 30th birthday. She's only 30 once, you know. It's just... So that's one of the good things that has come out of YouTube is 
having friends that you can chat to, it's it helps alleviate some of the isolation that you feel when you have got chronic pain and you can't get out and about like you want to and you know you have you end up cancelling a lot of social engagements last minute because you have a flare up and you just can't move. So yeah. Right, I'm gonna go into Tuk to see, which is the the really bright green. Look at that. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And I'm gonna because I've now set the lid, I'm just gonna run this through the crease. And then I'm gonna add some more pigment in and start to blend it up the eye, but I'm only gonna go about halfway up colour that I've already put in because obviously I still want that one to show but yeah I've, I follow a lot of Swedish YouTubers um, I started off with the original Angelica and through her I found Paulina um, I found Jessica when I'd filmed my makeup collection palette collection because um, when you put a, a film up with certain tags, you'll then find that the way the YouTube algorithm works is that videos with similar tags will appear in your news feed over the next few days. Um, and Jessica's um, film was titled 1400 Palettes, and I'm like, that's got to be a mistype, surely she means 140. No, no, she meant 1400. And she's got 1400, in fact she's probably got 15, 1600 by now. Um, where I'm blind in this site, it got pulled around a lot. I've got very deep creasing here. And I do have to slightly stretch the lid out. Because my normal blending does not actually cover the lid properly. So don't do that unless you absolutely have to. Or you will bug your own lid up as well. Yeah, so that's how I found Jessica, and through Jessica I found Linda. Um, and then I was watching, I was watching Paulina, and she mentioned the Angelica. I'm sure it's Lirma. Le Angie, you're going to have to tell me how to pronounce your surname, sweetheart. I don't like mispronouncing people's names. Um, yeah, she mentioned the Angie that I'm collabing with today. And uh, I flipped across and watched her channel. And some of her earlier, a lot of her earlier films were actually in Swedish. Um, but she recently switched to English. And she produces some beautiful, beautiful looks. I mean, absolutely stunning. The girl's, she's a wizard when it comes to, you know, you, you, you put a palette in her hands and, and the girl can make it jump up and sing and dance and do all kinds of things that you would never think a palette could do. So I am super, super happy um, that she wanted to collab with us. Uh, and I love that. And I love the fact that we're the triple A's. And it's nice to have another Angie as well, because when I was at school there were about four Angies in my year. But you hardly ever hear that name anymore. Angela and Angie seems to have disappeared off of the radar so it's really nice to have another Angie to chat to you know but right, I'm just cleaning this brush off do love this those colors have blended really nicely it's weird on cam uh, on the camera that bit there looks a bit patchy but in my mirror it looks absolutely fine Bizarre. Very, very bizarre. Right, I'll grab another one of these um, Chic Pro brushes. This is what they call their eyeshadow brush. It's, uh, it's oval rather than being round. And I'm going to go into San or Son, which is the deep matte green in this palette. I'm going to run this the crease too, just to deepen, wow that's deepened up lovely, look at that. And I'm going to pop some just on the outer edge of the eye there. Just 
normally I go back along with this brush to blend the edges out, but that, that's kind of... It's already blended. <laughs> wow, that is a good pigment. Because greens are one of the most difficult colours to create. Blue, green, um, red and obviously purple by definition, because obviously blue and red make purple are some of the most difficult colours to create to get them pigmented and to get them blending like this. I'm just really... I don't know why I'm so surprised because Juvia's palettes are lovely anyway. But um, even though there's a bit of an issue going on with Juvia's at the moment, isn't there? Um, I can kind of see it from both sides really. You know, a lot of people don't like Jeffree Star because, you know, despite the fact he's apologised numerous times on numerous platforms for his behaviour and as far as we know, it's not come out that he's said anything racist since then. I know a lot of people say about um, calling Jackie Isla a rat, but calling someone a rat isn't racist. Jimmy Cagney called people, you dirty rat. A rat is someone who lies and is sneaky. You know, well, Jackie Weiner lied about Paddy Page on film to her millions of subscribers, did some half-assed apology on Instagram, and has never fully properly apologised to Paddy Page on YouTube, so I've got no time for the woman, I'm sorry. Um, and some people say about those texts that his ex-hairdresser had, it's been proven that they were fake. But I understand, you know, I'm, I'm not a person of colour, it's, it's not up to me to say whether or not they should accept Jeffrey's apology, that's entirely down to them. But if you're a smaller company like Juvia's Place is, because it is still a small company when you compare it to, you know, things like Fenty that have got huge backers behind it. Um, yeah, Juvia's Place is still relatively a small company. And when you suddenly get Jeffrey Star give something his seal of approval. I mean, we've seen with the um, that Paulist Putty Primer thing from um, Elf. Jeffrey Star approved that. You couldn't find it for love nor money anywhere because everyone was like, oh, Jeffrey Star's approved it. I've got to have it, and it just sold out. So you can understand from a business standpoint why they. Um, reposted that Jeffrey had approved their foundation. They didn't send him the foundation, he bought it himself out of his own money, it's not like they sent him PR. But, you know, people are getting uh, aerated about it. And like I said, it's not for me to say what people are allowed to be offended by. But in terms of the additional revenue that will have created for Juvia's Place, allowing them more cash flow, higher cash flow, so they can continue to develop items for people of colour. I don't know. Anyway, it's not going to stop me using them because I love their products, basically. Right, I'm going to go into this Oh My Glitter uh, gold pigment. And it's a loose pigment, so I'm going to wet brush first. This is a Morphe M321. So I'm just going to douse that. And then just wipe it off on my hand to dry the ferrule off. And I'm going to dip this into the gold pigment. Like a cell. Right, because I'm blinding this side, if I close this one, not a lot's going to happen. So I'm going to look down here into a mirror so you can see what I'm doing. 
Now, when you work with loose pigments, you will get fallout um, unless you mix them with a mixing medium into like a paste. But that doesn't worry me. I'm just going to pop this pigment onto my lid. I think it's the perfect accompaniment to these greens. What do you think? I quite like that. Rewet my brush and dip in again. And I'm going to do this side now. With this side, because of those creases, I do have to stretch the lid out, otherwise the shimmer sort of collects in those creases and then through the day as I move my eye I end up with um, showers of in this case gold freckles starting which if that's the look you're going for fantastic if it's not the look you're going for not so great I mean, obviously it's late at night, I'm not actually going out anywhere after this, I'm going to finish filming this, do the, in do the outro, do the intro, <laughs> take some photos, and then probably take this all off and uh, put a face mask on. I'm just putting the lid back on that pigment before I spill it everywhere, because I am, as regular viewers will know, a klutz. Right. I am going to pause you while I go off camera and I'm going to lob some foundation etc on and I'll be back to finish this off this eye look so you'll see me instantly I'll, I'll see you when I next press the button okay I am back I'm going to grab this flat top brush that we spoke about earlier and I'm going to go back into San, which is the deep green and I'm going to connect it to the outside edge here and just bring it under my eyes because where I'm struggling at the moment with my fibro making my eyes very watery add to that hay fever I cannot keep eyeliner on to save my life at the moment so the trick that I'm doing is whatever colour I've put, whatever the deepest colour is that I've put through the crease, I'll use that underneath my eye and then I'll load the brush up and just almost imperceptibly make an extra dark line just at the edge there, you see? Just at the edge. Just sort of stamp it on. And what that does, it gives you the same illusion that a winged eyeliner would do. It still pulls the eye out and up. Little tip for you there. Full of them, mate. See? Full of them. Right, this is actually the flat top brush that was in the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. And I am going to dip into, I think, Tutsi, which is the mid-shade green that we used. And I'm going to use that just to really buff along that lower lash line. Partly to soften it. I don't take it up the edge though, I stop it just before that extra deep bit, otherwise you lose the effect that we've done. So I do this partly to soften and partly to marry the top and the bottom eyes together, so to speak. And now I'm going to grab, this brush is so old, I think I bought this brush from eBay about 10 years or more ago, this is an old lip brush, and I'm going to go into the coral shimmer in this palette. And I'm going to run that just up under my brow 
Ooh, this might be light enough for you to use as a highlight. Ooh, that'd be good. And I'm going to pop it on the inner corner. And I like to just bring it down just under the tear duct and just buff it in to where the colour starts to come along. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can just do, you know, the, the inner eye there. But I just, I think it just looks really nice just to carry it along there. Just really helps to open the eyes up. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck highlight all over my face, uh, put some mascara on, choose a lipstick, uh, either do something with my hair or put a hat on, and I'll be back with my final look. I am back. I decided to rock the hat because, to be honest, it's too hot to take my hair down. <laughs> I did actually use that shade from the palette for my highlighter and I like it because it's it's a champagne but it, as you turn your head you just catch a glimpse of green in it which I love because it really ties in with the eyes and the lip gloss that I've used is one of the Revolution sheer brilliant ones in shade Val and it's not it's not one of those sticky ones where you get like the strings but, oh, I can't stand lip glosses that are like that so there we go this is my final look using Juvia's Place Tri Palette and Oh My Glitter OMG Loose Gold Pigment what do you think? do you like it? would you have done this? what colours would you have chosen? Let me know in the comments box what colours you would have gone for out of that palette and whether you would have put a loose shimmer on like I did or would you have gone for a glitter or would you have gone for a liquid um, eyeshadow. What do you think? What would your choice be? Hmm? I've got to admit it's such a shame that it's so late at night that I've got to take this off because this is such a good look. I think I think I might actually have to recreate this look and go out somewhere with it because I genuinely like this look a lot. And it's the first time I've used that tribe palette as well. So super happy with the uh, three shades that I have used from that. But obviously I need to do more testing of all of the shades including the, the rest of the shimmers in there before I can give you my final thoughts on that palette. Now, obviously, I have an awful lot of other films you can go and watch, but before you watch them, let me slide this way, you need to go and watch Angie and Anya. There you go, Anya. I stuck you in an Angie sandwich again. And see exactly what looks they have created using the same palette and what is their joker that they've played is it a loose pigment is it a liquid eyeshadow or have they gone for glitter hmm? there's only one way to find out and that is to watch both of their films and if you've come here from one of their channels Hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, I waffle quite a bit. I'm ever so slightly nuts. But all the best people are. Um, we are such a friendly channel here and I'd be delighted if you would love to stay. Talking of staying, those of you who are subscribed to me, please double check that you are still subscribed because hubby said to me, have you not put any videos up recently, love? And I'm like, well, yeah, the usual three a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Why? He went, I already notifications through for me for a couple of weeks. And we checked, and not only had his notifications been turned off, 
who'd have been unsubscribed from my channel? My husband, who watches and likes all of my films, deleted from my channel. If I didn't trust him like I do, could have caused a marital row. I jest, of course I trust him. But uh, yeah, do please double check that your subscription is still there and if you've rung my bell, rung my bell, just make sure it's still chosen. Right, that's quite enough for me. I'm absolutely blisteringly hot. I need to film the intro for this and then take this off my face and put a nice relaxing face mask on and chill out with something vaguely cold and possibly alcoholic. Well, it is the evening now, folks. Right, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.